What is good to still family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. We're gonna break down what's happening with the economic calendar thus far, what's going on with other pieces of news and balance of Tesla, what these analysts are saying about their deliveries and things like that. So what you should be watching for as you approach this trading day. But before I break things up on Tesla in the market and give you guys a very, very quick pre-market update video, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo with the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks. This offer ends in just 12 hours. Anyways, for Tesla, as you guys can see, Tesla's been on a bit of a downtrend over here as we had this high being established at this 184 area. We came back down, established a lower high, and we're continuing to sink just a little bit. We have this gap to fill right here from the pre-market, so we could see Tesla come down a little to fill that and try to make its way back up if we do get a reaction. Uh, I do believe that Tesla could trade within a range at least for today for the time being. But then a much bigger move is going to come after we get deliveries. So I'm going to break down some factors involving the markets first, break down some data before I break down these charts. So I first want to mention that today is Monday, April 1st, 2024. All right. 15 minutes after the market opens at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI coming out. And then 30 minutes after the market opens at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the ISM Manufacturing PMI, construction spending. And then two important ones are going to be the new orders report and then the prices because it's going to give us more data that's forward looking for inflation. So in a nutshell, look for some volatility at 9.45 a.m. a reaction to the PMI report. Uh, for the overall markets, it could also affect Tesla to some extent. And then at 10 o'clock a.m., we're going to be looking for a bigger move in the markets, uh, either to the upside or the downside, possibly the upside, uh, depending on what the data looks like. Uh, once we get the new orders report and the manufacturing prices, so watch for all of this very, very carefully at 10 o'clock a.m. for some volatility as well. Then at 1130, excuse me, 1130 a.m., we also have the three-month and six-month bill auctions also coming out. So watch for the, those very, very carefully. Now, for other things involving the markets, this is what our kind of like screenshot looks like for earnings. If you're interested in taking one, I'm not really going to talk too much about them specifically, but that is what earnings are looking like for now. And then moving forward, I just want to mention that we have a lot going on for uh, Monday as well. We just started Q2, so we're going to be looking to see if the market gets another pop or not. Uh, on Friday, Jerome Powell said that the economy is strong. He said that, once again, they have to continue to monitor the data. But Powell did say a couple of dovish things. He said the Fed may have to delay and be very, very careful with when they end up cutting rates. Uh, they're not really planning on cutting rates for the super, super near term. They're going to give it more time and stuff. But like I said before, some things that Powell said were a little bit more dovish. So we'll see what that affects us for today. Uh, inflation did rise a little bit according to the PCE reports. Uh, but everything was very close to expectations, so it wasn't really like too bad or anything like that. Uh, there's been some talk about Disney's next CEO, nothing too crazy like that. And that's all I'm really seeing on the news that's like super, super significant, at least worth noting. Uh, don't forget the price of gold hit a new all-time high right here. Uh, that's very, very important after the latest PCE report. Uh, but that's it for now in terms of news. Now let's just talk about Tesla because I want to break down some interesting stuff. So Troy Tesla is known for having some very, very interesting assessments of Tesla and the markets. And he's known for being quite accurate when it comes to his projections of how Tesla's deliveries are going to look. And unfortunately, what I'm seeing is he's aiming for less than a 3% error when he says this. He's estimating Tesla's only going to do 409,000 in deliveries, which is actually a lot lower than the analyst consensus of 431,000. He also is saying that production may be around 429,000. So if he's off by like 5%, for example, you know, that would still put this estimate a little bit below expectations. And he's known for being right the majority of the time. His average error is about 1.3%. He's looking for a maximum error of about 3% as usual. So he's expecting them to miss on deliveries and production to not be that strong. So with that being said, guys, I mean, with this happening, who knows if he's going to be correct? Uh, I would say that instead of just trying to predict or cry at this point, let's just not worry. Let's wait and see what the numbers look like tomorrow. They're coming out tomorrow, most likely before the market opens, but sometimes it could be delayed. But tomorrow the numbers will come out for Tesla's delivery, so we'll see if Troy Tesla is correct. We can finally put his estimate to the test. But I just want to say that he's not looking too optimistic about this, and I want to give you guys kind of like a heads up 
numbers may not be that great. So just be careful if you're trying to play Tesla. He could be wrong, right? It's always possible that he's wrong and Tesla does close to uh, 440,000. Maybe they do only 430,000. Or maybe he's correct and only do about 409,000. Who knows, guys? But I do want to say that one of the most common expectations is that Tesla's not going to do well. So we'll have to wait and see. There's also news that came out that Tesla's, uh, it, it rose the prices of its Model Y by about $1,000 because it's now April 1st, right? And this is when the little temporary discount has now changed. So that's going to be important for all Model Ys in the USA. Prices are going up by $1,000. They were trying to incentivize more and more sales by bringing them down temporarily in March. Now sales are going to go back up for that. And then on top of this, there's been a lot of talk about their poor guidance. Things are not looking that great. And how there's a lot of articles about how Tesla's down about 30% already, not performing too well, and why things are not looking as great. But I'm not going to talk too much about that. Let's talk about the share price. So Tesla has the support right here. Uh, it's trying to hold 175.97 R50, uh, our, 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 uh, 200 EMA, excuse me, the 200 EMAs right there. We also have 175 below that, 173.8. 172, then eventually lower levels like the 168 area. We have resistance to be watching for at 177.6. If we do break through this, watch 180. And if we get above that, watch 182.5 as resistance. So this chart does look a little bit more bearish. We had this high here, came down, lower high, came down, making another lower high. When we open, Tesla does love to kind of like pop and drop, pop and drop, pop and drop. It's done that many times in the past. So is this the pop and drop right here? Are we about to get another one like this? Uh, it's very ambiguous. Uh, it also depends on SPY because I do see some potential for SPY to attempt to hold up quite well. And we have to watch for what the reaction is with all this data coming out, right? But I just want to note that what's very common is Tesla tries to kind of rebound a little bit when we open. Maybe it tries to retest this high right here, get close to like 177. And then might get a rejection, come back down, come back down as this gap gets filled at 175. And if we lose this, there's also another gap. So watch 175 as key support. If we lose this, we have another gap to build 173.8. And we could be looking for a little decline. So it might pop and then drop and come a little bit lower, closer to the lower 170 area. It's like 172 to 173.8, like this zone down here. Then make our way back up and just trade sideways today. So we might get a very sideways amount of price action as the chart's kind of indecisive about deliveries. So I think it might pop a bit come back down to this liquidity zone and then come back up and just continue to trade sideways. I find that to be very, very probable. For SPY, I just want to note that SPY has been holding it very, very well. Uh, we could get an attempt to touch this, but I actually have a different view from this point because we're actually holding a 20 EMA a little bit better. So I think what's going to happen is we have to watch this reaction right here on the hourly time frame. Do we come down to 523 to 522 and then get a bounce? back up and start pushing for this new all-time high again towards 526 or do we end up losing 522 and turn bearish if we lose 522 we turn bearish we're going to be sinking back down to 520 or below that if we hold above like this 523 area if we fill this gap and bounce we could see another attempt to push higher before anything else because the trend is still bullish on spy if anything so i wouldn't be surprised if this thing actually kind of like dips a little bit and then we see some buyers defend it all of a sudden and starts pushing back up to like 525 to 526 again and if we break through this uh, i'd be watching basically a uh, very important resistance up here uh right up at 527.5 to 520 i think that's gonna be a very important resistance based off our fib extension tool uh i'm not going to show you how i calculate everything for now i just wanted to mention this is level because I, I don't have enough time to do that for now so you know it could you know, dip a little bit, but then look for and see if we get a little rebound attempt back up to this 525 to 526 area. Then we come back down. Uh, that's a real possibility. And we also have those key levels above. So make sure you watch your resistance levels I have marked up. So watch and see if we get a pop, like move on spine and move back down. On the QQQ, we have this gap to fill below. So it could actually come down a little bit more like spy. Going to be looking for a test of uh, either it tries to hold 444.8 but if it doesn't hold that this yellow ema right here then we could come down to 444 and then get a little rebound attempt before it continues lower that's another like real possibility so look for a test of 444.8 and if we lose that we could go all the way down to 444 then a rebound it could actually try to rebound a little bit to make our way back down so watch for that very very carefully i find that to be very probable as well watch your levels on the qqq uh, additionally, we also have, let me just double check this, NVIDIA. 
Now, NVIDIA is showing a little bit of life. It's kind of in the middle. It's just shuffling in the range still. So watch 908 as key resistance. If we get a clean break above this, we could push higher towards 920. Haven't gotten that yet. We did gap up now, and then we just came back down. Watch support at 892. If we lose this, a bigger drop is coming towards like 885. Otherwise, NVIDIA is still kind of stuck in this range. It is attempting to uptrend a little bit, so it could actually try to balance, especially as we have this imbalance above. So watch and see if we can try to get above 908. It does have potential to kind of push higher now that we're seeing some signs of uptrending. So it might try to push higher, uh, but we need to see confirmation of a break for that to happen. And we also have Apple, the one and only Apple stock looking kind of weak forming a double top like structure. Could come back down to about 171, make our way back up to 172.5. And come back down just continue to trade sideways within this range it's also kind of resembles like an inverse cup and handle like structure so you know it could come down pop back up and then continue to sink that's another real possibility but i just want to make it clear that right now apple is still kind of range bound so we just want to be very careful with the way things are moving and uh, i'm going to be continuing to remain optimistic no matter what super micro kind of flat right now just like what i said yesterday it's still range bound if we break that 1,025 resistance around this area, we could push higher to this imbalance at 1,050. If we lose 1,000, look for a move down to about 980, if not 950. For a couple more, SoFi still range bound, very boring. There's not much going on with it. Microsoft, this to me is looking kind of uh, okay. If we hold above 422, look for a, a balance. So it might come down to 422, then balance. If we lose that, it could come down to fill this gap, so watch for that. And then Amazon, you know, we're going to be watching this resistance. It's actually showing some strength, trying to break 181. If we hold above 181, look for a push from 182.5. If we lose 181, we turn back to bearish. As of right now, we're holding up well. Uh, that's it for the video, guys. I'm going to try to keep this one kind of simple. So for Tesla, we're going to be looking for an attempt to kind of like pop upon open, like I was talking about. We'd love to do that. Could come here, pop, rebound, fill this imbalance, come back down, kind of trade within this range. So look for a pop and drop like move and a move back up and some sideways price action for now on Tesla as the share price is kind of indecisive. But then we're going to be looking for a much bigger move once we get deliveries. I don't know if Troy Tesla is going to be right about 409,000. It could be right, could be wrong. We'll just have to wait and see. With that being said, thank you all so much for listening. Uh, for now, this doesn't really matter as much on Tesla, whatever it does today. The much bigger move is going to come tomorrow after deliveries. So just be patient, do what's best for your own portfolios, and I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Thank you for listening, and peace out.